It is a big day for two reasons. One, the new Crescent City comes out. Two, we fully expect James Don, the CEO of the company, to stop by work today. We've been preparing. <laughs> I'm really excited. I want to meet him. I hope he does show up. Um, yeah, big day. Big day. I have to get there early because it's new release Tuesday, but I'm not complaining because it's Crescent City Day. Hello. Um, updates real quick. I picked up my copy. I'm like halfway through the prologue. This prologue is fucking long. Um, I had to work. Oh my goodness. So a couple things. First of all, hello. Uh, welcome to the Teapot Reads. I'm the Teapot. My name is Sam and I am reading the second Crescent City book, House of Sky and Breath. Yes, I always forget the title and I'm going to continually forget this title. I'm probably just going to continue to call it Crescent City. Um, updates. James Daunt did not show up, at least today. I'm very sad. I wanted to meet him. Or at least not during my shift. Maybe he'll come tonight. Update number two. So if, if this is your first time watching me or watching my vlogs, I have had a lot of dental work done recently because um, I broke a molar of about two weeks. No, the same week of Christmas, the Tuesday before Christmas. Broke a molar and they couldn't see me until mid-January. And then it turned out I needed two root canals on that tooth and on another tooth. So I got the root canals. And at this point I'm at the process where I have the permanent filling and a temporary crown. And I do have dental insurance, but it's still been very expensive. This has not been fun. When I was there last, I paid what's about two paychecks worth for the crown and the filling. And then today, so that was over a week ago. And then today I got a text from the dentist that was like my statement, which I don't fully understand. So I am going to have to call them later. Um, I don't think they're open now and I'm just, I have a little bit of time, so I'll probably do it not tomorrow, but the day after, cause I'm off that day. And so I can like sit down. I don't know how long it's gonna take. Um, the statement doesn't say anything about what I paid and is another two paychecks. So I really hope that it's not like an additional two paychecks. But in case it is, I did just take out um, a loan. I use Prosper loans. I just, I need more dental work past this. Um, and I found out, cause I got a second text from my dentist that this has now maxed out my insurance for the year and I do need further dental work. So I did take out a loan from Prosper. I've used them before. I'm still technically paying off another loan from them, but I trust them and I didn't want to go with another place since I'm already using Prosper. So that's the realities of being an adult. I'm, I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> but it's, it's whatever. I do like that Prosper will just automatically deduct the, um, I'm sure everyone does, but they just do it in a way that I notice. And good news, I'm going, so tonight, tonight I do wanna, I wanna read, I, the, my goal lately has been reading a book every 10 days. I think this is gonna maybe break that streak, we'll see. I would love to dedicate probably like an hour and a half every day to reading this book, but. I doubt I'll be able to. We'll see, I could be totally wrong. Um, but I'm going to actually go to my grandmother's house for dinner. My mom is picking up food and then from my, one of my favorite restaurants, Beef Shack. I love them. And um, then we're going to my grandmother's for to eat there with her and then and I get a Tick Tank. And then I'm coming home and I'm gonna do a little bit of work, probably do some writing or something. Ooh, computer almost started falling. And then I will uh, watch, I have a ticket to the Live Talks LA Sergio Mass launch day event thing online. So I wanna watch that. I'll probably half pay attention. I don't care that much. Like I wanna see it, but it's not like end of the world if I can't and then sleep. I do work tomorrow, but I will try to do some reading before work tomorrow because I don't go as early. This morning I had to get there at 8 because it was New Release Day. Anyway, 
that's just it for updates. That's it for like my little intro. <laughs> I'm really excited for this book. This prologue is dense though. It's about a character I don't even know yet, which I kind of hate when that happens. I hate, st I hate when books in a series will start off with a new character as the prologue. It actually is one of my pet peeves. I'm not gonna lie. But I also disliked the way the first Crescent City started and I freaking loved that book in total. So I'll probably enjoy this one too. So far, they're following the same trajectory. update for you all um it's thursday it's my day off this has been this has felt like such a busy week and i still have like obviously two days left in this week but then i work for five days in a row which no isn't a lot like that's the typical work week but normally we are only scheduled like four days in a row and then we get a day off. Um, so five days in a row is just a lot uh, when you're not used to it. I mean, it's a lot in general, but it's a lot, especially when you're not used to it. So I have five days of that. Um, I just hit chapter 10. It's fine so far. It's been kind of slow. I'm enjoying it. I definitely have better vibes early on than I did for A Court of Silver Flames. And I don't think I'm being optimistic when I say that. It's just so far kind of boring. We've gotten a lot of characters introduced. And I'm just like, okay. I'm going to have to remember all of you now. Um, this book is... I don't know. It, it. I guess book one was so long. It could have sort of been like two books. Because this feels almost like the Queen of Shadows. Or era fire of this series so just like it feels further in than book two is what i'm trying to get at but i really don't have much else to say about that book um i just started snow yesterday was like warm out and it rained and today it's snowing and i turned my bed heater on and i brought my dog up and we're gonna be cozy and i've done pretty much everything i need to do today so i'm just gonna relax i'm gonna read i'm gonna play some pokemon i'm going to vibe for the rest of the day and I'm very excited about it. Oh I was not expecting that. Um Um we know who Silver is now. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Stuff's happening. I'm getting a little more excited for this book. <gasps> oh my god, what the fuck? Controversial opinions, okay? I have two controversial opinions. One, I do not care about Therian. Like, he's just a very whatever character. And his point of views are making him even less interesting to me. Um, I find him very boring just incredibly very boring and I don't get why the internet loves him so much I didn't get it from book one I was just like okay Therian exists I guess he's a murr like it's cool in that aspect but he was just such a blah character <laughs> and he's just continuing to be a very blah bland character in this book so no I do not care for Therian I think he's getting too much screen time um and then my second unpopular opinion um I really so Rune is probably my favorite of the secondary characters and I kind of really dislike the way he's described. That's so petty and just like rude of me, but um, uh, I just don't love it. I'm not saying it's like an unattractive description, but I just don't like it for this character some reason I can't picture him with I think he's got like half a shaved head and like really long hair 
and like his piercing I can kind of picture um I think he has tattoos I don't know I just can't I, I refuse to picture him that way I have a very specific picture of Rune in my head which yes I'm not a super visual reader so it's not like detailed but um that it's not it's not the way he's actually described so those are my uh, possibly controversial, possibly unpopular opinions. I'm pretty sure the Therian one's unpopular. People fucking love him and I do not get it. What about this fish boy makes him so interesting? Can, can someone explain? Quick theory time before I go to bed because it's getting late, but I have some thoughts. I have lots of thoughts actually on the book. Uh, spoilers, obviously I will put uh, the timestamp you want to jump to to avoid all spoilers down below. Um, okay. Um, so, theory one. Hunt is related to Thur. Got thunder. Got a lightning. Pretty sure. He's the, the Project Thur or something related to Project Thur. Agent Daybreak, I think, is um, the new archangel. Celestina, is that her name? I kind of hope it's not, but I think it's what's going to happen. Um, and I think that the princes of hell are trying to pit Bryce and Hunt against each other. I think that the um, prince of the pit, Itis, is that the prince of the pit? He wants Bryce to be his hero basically and the um the other one the one that came to hunt in a dream i think he wants hunt those are my theories the, am i right we're gonna find out oh i i kind of hope i'm right about them being pitted against each other i think that'll be a fun dynamic we need to talk about this book because i hate to say it's a disappointment um, because it's not completely. Um, I'm not halfway yet, but hopefully by the end of the night. I think I have like four more chapters to hit the halfway point. <sighs> I think my biggest issue, my biggest issues, my two biggest issues without spoiling anything with this book is the reveals are not particularly powerful. There was one really good reveal that had great setup. You know, we kind of learn about this mysterious character. We learn about Agent Silver in the prologue and we're given enough mystery about it and then when it's revealed, it is shocking and it fits in well at that point to be revealed. Like you need to know who Agent Silver is for other things to happen. It works, it works really well. There is another reveal. We find out um, a relationship between a character and a new character. And that reveal was so bland and blah, just as an example, it was very blah. There've been a couple reveals where I'm just like, this is whatever. Like, oh no, like this is happening. Okay, I guess. And the reason I think this was such a blah reveal is because while there was some mystery around this relationship, you know, it was like this character had set out this mystery at some point and you're like, yeah, okay. That would be interesting to find out. Um, and you're not necessarily thinking about it actively, which is always good for our surprise or a reveal to not be like thinking about it and trying to pick apart all the characters. But there was no delay between this new character being introduced on page and the reveal. The character is just introduced and then it is immediately revealed what this connection is and then after that's revealed, another thing is revealed. And I feel like it should have been in the other order. I feel like you see this character on page, some scenes pass. 
Then you find out the second reveal about this character. Some more scenes pass. Then you find out the connection between this character and the other character. That would have been a more impactful reveal. And I feel like in Crescent City 1 and in a lot of other Sarah J Mass books, we get impactful reveals. But in this one, so far, we really haven't seen any. The other thing about reveals that is getting kind of annoying is how many there are. It feels like it is just one after the other. Like every 50 pages, oh, here's a reveal as a treat. No, stop it. They have to feel earned. The other major issue I have comes to the characters. So I guess this is two pronged. One is that the characters are making very odd decisions and the decisions are either paying off or they're just not having the proper consequences. For example, and this is a small spoiler. No, I'm not I'm trying not to spoil it. No spoil. A character was like goofing off and does something that accidentally reveals something else. And this revelation, it reveals like an item that literally a chapter ago was first introduced into the book as like something the characters might want. And then randomly doing this thing reveals it. Another instance, we have um, a couple characters going somewhere dangerous. And then just like straight up being like, this is what we're looking for. <laughs> like, why? Why are you just like being so free with it? Or another instance, um, here's, I don't think this is a spoiler. I mean, it's a spoiler and that happens in the book, but like nothing happens because of it. Okay. Um, a bunch of characters go to the meat market and spend literally half an hour there looking around just like looking around they split up they they search in different directions half an hour and then I'm like yep I guess we didn't find what we were looking for oh my god if it was that easy to find <laughs> someone else would have found it first if it was that easy to find okay so it's just silly decisions okay it's very silly decisions the characters are also lacking a lot of depth I think minus Cormac, who is a character who is great and a great addition. And I also think Celestine is a great addition, although um, right now she is kind of lacking a little depth. And I don't know if that's because we're just being kept in the dark about her as a character or because she actually lacks depth. But even characters we've known since book one are suddenly very two-dimensional feeling. And this is because they're not really holding anything back. They're being very just giving and vocal about whatever they want, except Cormac. And I'm so tired of it. Like Ethan, what is his deal? Literally he got, he got beat up and exiled and now he's living at Bryce's place and that's it. That like, there's nothing to Ethan past that. He played Sunball? Okay. You keep reminding me of that, but I... does it matter? It doesn't feel like it matters. It doesn't feel like any of the facts that we're getting about these characters matter. And it feels like there's nothing to them because everything is just very in the moment or driving forward or just existing to fuel plot. There's nothing that feels genuine to the characters. I think if the dialogue wasn't tagged, I would not be able to tell the characters apart. And it's a problem. It is a serious problem. And I didn't realize it until recently that this was a problem. Here, let me see. Let me see if I can find a scene um, early on within the first hundred pages so that it's not really a spoiler. All right, this is page 88. Okay, don't look it up. See if you can tell who's talking. Is that what this is about? That she showed you up? That she has more power than you? What, you needed to put her back in her place? You are delusional. I'm stooping to marry yourself. Okay, wait, maybe this <laughs> will give away. Hold on. Let me find a different one because that's clearly who, we know who that's talking. Okay, here, page 81. Again, don't look it up. 
I'm going to blank out any names. <laughs> Everything good? Aside from the fact that I have to be up in a few hours, sure. Tickets are switched. Right. Beds. I'm good on the couch. Oh no, you're in my room. I won't have you bleeding all over my white couch. I'll sleep on the couch. You can have my room. Nope, it's fine. My bed is big. Then you can sleep on the couch and give the bed. With my back problems? I'm tired and I don't want to argue. Conversation over. Outside of context, there's nothing to differentiate what I just read aloud. What's this? Okay, here's one from 97. I'm going to also try to um, cut out at context of like names and such. Males will always try to control the females who scare them. Marriage and breeding are their go-to methods. Satisfying as it is to think of being afraid of me, that can't be it. Why not? It's been months. You've done nothing with... You've done nothing with... Or the... He grew tired of waiting. I wouldn't be surprised if he did this just to learn how you'd react. Maybe. What are you going to do about it? Pretend it's not happening until I can any longer? I worried, you know, when I learned you were... I've watched many succumb to the allure of being... Perhaps you and your brother have more in common than I realized. Is it a compliment? It is. He's one of the few who's ever been strong enough to shun what he is. You don't plan on doing anything with it then. Your talent. Definitely not. And it seems most of the value lies in what I can breed into the... And what good does blinding people do? I mean, it does have its uses, but surely there are deadlier weapons to wield. You killed without... I imagine that you can now do a great many things. There's just so little difference beside a context. And it's just, have her books always been like this? And I'm just noticing because this is like really disappointing. I'm not hating it yet. I want to be clear. I'm still liking it a lot more than A Court of Silver Flames. But if the second half of this book doesn't do some serious work, I'm probably going to rate this pretty low. Today is my first day off in what feels like forever and I am just taking it slow and enjoying it and just trying to recharge. Um, I hit the halfway point on House of Sky and Breath. It's fine. I did decide to, because it's taking me so long, I did download the audiobook and uh, the narrator's she's pretty decent. Um, not really how I pictured the voices, but I think she's doing a good job. But the audiobook is giving me the perfect opportunity because I can sit there and just like talk at the book so much more. Like I was driving home listening to it and I was like, why are you doing that? What are you doing? Who said you could do like things like that? So I have been enjoying that aspect of it quite a bit. I also... Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I took a small little break from House of Sky and Breath to read a children's book um, that I just, I had to get. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch camera so that you can see it. This is Brambly Hedge. This is the most charming thing I've ever seen. I actually saw it on TikTok. Someone was talking about it and they were talking about the art in here and I was like, oh my God, I have to have it. So I immediately ordered it at work. Um, I did not grow up with this, but I wish I had. Look at this. It's very like Beatrix Potter, Winnie the Pooh, that kind of vibe. Um, and it's just gorgeous. So there's eight stories in here and they're just, the art is so intricate and so beautiful. Like I, I have been having such a good time reading these. And the characters are just so charming and the stories are charming and it's it's so immersive. Um, it's giving me a little bit of that nostalgia that I was really craving because um, I'm in just like a cozy nostalgic mood, but it's also like really fun to read. Like I am just thoroughly enjoying it regardless and I think I would have enjoyed it no matter what. So this was a great decision. I have one more story left in this collection and I'm sad that there's only eight stories because I could live in these stories forever. But I have one more story left and then I will go back to dedicating all of my reading time to House of Sky and Breath. But yeah, this has been just an absolute, absolute pleasure to read. Since it is my day off, um, I do, or I am trying to get a lot done and I do have a lot that I need to get done. So I've, I've got my laundry going right now. 
Um, I'm gonna do the other like daily tasks that I always try to do. I'm going to do some practicing with the ukulele and then I'm probably going to order lunch around 11 o'clock. I wasn't going to order lunch, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna treat myself today. So I'm gonna get noodles because I love noodles. And then um, I'm going to probably take the dog out then I'm going to do some filming because I want to film a video and I want to do a lot of editing today. And I also, I need to make a call uh, about my teeth. I have to change an appointment and also pay for my last appointment. Um, and then I have, what else do I have to do? I feel like there's some other really important stuff for me to get done today. There probably is and I'm just blanking. Hopefully I remember as the day progresses. Yes, I'm gonna leave you for now because I'm gonna go do some of that daily stuff because I wanna get all that done before I order lunch. I'm also gonna give Tank a real good brushing today. He likes his brush, so that's good. Um, so yeah, I will see you in a little bit. Shit's about to go down. Chapter 55. <laughs> okay. Shit. Um. talk about a couple things um one the book it's definitely hitting its stride and it's got that very exciting final act aspect going on right now i'm on chapter 62 um it's not it's definitely not as good as book one and i am i'm waiting it out i feel like one of my issues i was having was a lot of things were happening there were no consequences but we have finally seen consequences we have in for like the last 10 chapters or so and that has been really good and there have been some really nice surprises because of it um but it just it took too long uh the the delayed consequences sort of just were driving me crazy we'll see how it wraps up and i'll definitely do a little review portion of this video at the end to talk about my thoughts on the book as a whole but if we see follow through with things that have been happening um it won't be a disappointing book it'll just be not as good as book one i think i'm going to finish the book today this weekend i will definitely sit down and talk to you with more of a review aspect i don't know if there will be anything between now and then they're having some major reveals but i just kind of want to sit down and read it and just be done with it um finish this up and see see how it's uh see how it's gonna end i finished listening to the audiobook on the drive home from work and i screamed i was screaming we'll talk we're gonna talk tomorrow mm -hmm. screaming so this weekend i will definitely be talking more in depth but i have had a couple hours and a full night's rest to uh hey look it's tank hi tinky <laughs> you're on camera babe hi <laughs> um and a full night's rest to process and think about the way the book ended. So I will be doing a full review at the end of this. 
um, and there will be links down below, which it's probably a little late for me to say that, but if you just wanted to tune in for the review, review is down below, linked. The ending definitely got a reaction out of me. A hundred thousand percent, it got a reaction out of me and it got the right reaction out of me. And I loved it a little bit, but I'm also a little like, I don't think unsettled is the right term, but I'm a little wary of such an ending. What does this mean? You know, um, I also like, um, thinking about my mother, uh, whose only context for this book series is book one. Uh, she's very excited for book two, but the ending is going to be a curious thing for her, I think. I don't, I don't know if she'll get anything out of the ending. So basically, the ending, while it got a reaction out of me, I know there are going to be some readers of this book, of this series, who don't get a reaction or don't get the proper reaction out of the ending. And I'm really curious about like that. Like, what is that ending experience like if you don't get the proper reaction? Anyway, yes, I will definitely go more into it. I'll give a review and I will talk in spoilers about my thoughts on the ending next. <laughs> Basically next time you see me. All right, it is time to do the review portion of this video, House of Sky and Breath. I didn't sit down and like collect all my thoughts because I just, I was like, okay, I'll give it a couple days and see how my thoughts change and my opinions change and how it, it sits with me for a couple days. And I think in the end, I'm giving it four-ish stars. Um, I think officially I wrote down four and a half but it's definitely like closer to the four part of four and a half than the five part. My major issue is how boring this is and how little the characters grow. There are some characters that have far too much page time. We did not need this much Therian or Ethan. I'm not saying that we have to excise their chapters completely, but we just did not need nearly as much of them as we had. There's a lot of repetitive moments and there is a lot of boring moments because they take up so much time. I really think this book just could have used a little more cutting away at scenes. Um, a lot of scenes could have been combined to be more impactful in the same way, not just Therian and Ethan scenes, but scenes in general. I liked all the new characters that were introduced. I just wish there had been more female characters introduced. And by the end, because I know my complaints across the board of this book was that there just weren't consequences for actions but by the end I thought that all the consequences had played out quite nicely or were in the process of being played out. I just wish that there had been some more as the novel progressed and not just like all at the end because it it was frustrating to read and be like oh I guess this doesn't matter. There's still a lot of things that I was like I don't get why characters are so upset about this or that. Um, I don't want to spoil and say what those things are, but there were like a lot of, there were reveals. I was like, I, why are you so upset? I don't get it. The ending. So I'm not going to spoil it, but I will say that as much as I enjoyed the ending and it got a great reaction out of me, it wasn't a great way to end the book. You've got to have mic drop drop moments like that as like the penultimate thing for the ending to be really good for every reader and not just specific readers. So I kind of fall on the side of I don't like that that's how it ended. I am very excited to see what happens, but I don't like that that's where it ended. I gave it four stars because it was in a lot of ways fun to read. The sex scenes were pretty boring, but they weren't, I mean, I didn't hate them. I was just like, this does not titillate me. This is blah. Um, and there were a lot of them, which I'm fine with, but again, did we need that many? But partly I have to recognize this is a romance. So yes, we did kind of need that many. So I'm not really penalizing the book for being what it is. I just, 
I was bored by those scenes. I was bored by so many scenes, though. There's a lot of dialogue, which I don't often mind, but I did in this book. Like, I think another example of a book that has a lot of dialogue that she wrote was A Court of Wings and Ruin, and I enjoyed that dialogue. I thought it was great. I just, I think the dialogue here, it doesn't really show character change or growth or have a lot of stakes. It's just people talking, and there's a lot of light talking, and... I was like, this isn't interesting. I do not care. Move the plot along. And the the surprises though, they were great. I was I had the rug pulled out for me quite a few times and I did enjoy that. And I no, it didn't ruin the book. I don't think this did anything bad, right? I think that it was too long. I think that's my major complaint. It was too long. But like comparing it to a court of silver flames, which I thought was actually a much worse, much more problematic book, and actually one that I hate. Uh, this was good. This was a fine, and it was actually good, and I did enjoy reading quite a few parts of it, especially the beginning and the ending. It's really just the middle that suffered quite a bit. I am excited for book three. Um, I, I'm very curious what's going to happen there. Like, my god. <laughs> How? What? What's going to happen? I'm also totally okay waiting, because as great of a plot twist as it was at the end. It, it's not wrecking or ruining my world. To have to wait, so. Yeah, that's kind of where I land on this book. Four and a half stars. Not terrible. This is also where I'm wrapping up the vlog. So I just want to, because it's been actually a couple days since I recorded anything for this. Um, but I just wanted to say that I'm doing okay. The world keeps turning, right? So the world keeps turning. I'm now reading another book that I'm absolutely loving. And it is a beautiful day outside and I'm gonna go hang out with my dog out there. So thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this vlog. Thank you for being interested in what I have to say. If you liked this content and wanna see similar content, definitely consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. If you're already subscribed, thank you to the moon and back. It is amazing of you to be here. Thank you. If you are somewhere cold, I hope you're staying warm, and if you're somewhere warm, I hope you're staying comfortable, but most of all, I hope you're reading a great book. I will see you guys next time. Bye!